Hello and welcome back to Armitage Candle Company, the premier online resource for accelerating your candle making technique and business. Today, we're gonna play with BW921 All Natural Pillar Blend, but instead of pillars, we're gonna blast out some wax melts because we're cool like that. BW921 comes in a pastel candy looking form. It's a soy wax proprietary blend, so it's probably got some other stuff in there because it can hold 10% fragrance and it melts at 135 degrees Fahrenheit. Like we normally do, the first step is to measure how much water weight fits into a single wax melt. These are the clamshell plastic molds that you'll often see at most suppliers. And what we're gonna do is measure the amount of water that fits into this and transform it into a water weight. Since we're batching this in three, it holds 83 grams of water, which is 249 for all three together. Using a conversion of 0.86, which is just an estimated specific gravity, we have a total weight of 214 grams. Assuming a 6% fragrance though, that leaves us with 202 grams of wax and 12 grams of fragrance for one batch of three clamshell molds. If you want to know more about that math, check out this video or check out the links below. Using our kitchen scale and pouring directly into our pour pot, making sure not to accidentally spill all the little pastilles everywhere on the table, we'll measure out 202 grams of the wax in preparation to put it on the heat. And you could measure in ounces, but I use grams, and if you care to use ounces, you'll just have to convert that on your own. Now we'll take our 202 grams of pastilles and put it on our heat source. You can use a double boiler or a hot plate like I have here. Meanwhile, we'll start to prepare the wax melt containers. Now the plan is to take this batch and pour it at three separate temperatures to see how the wax behaves in the wax melts with different pour temperatures. So I'm going to label these three with 180, 165, and 150 to see how it behaves. The manufacturer recommends pouring between 160 and 180, so we're gonna cover the spectrum with everything we have here. On each label, I'm putting the fragrance load, the wax type, and the pour temp. Who doesn't love the smell of a good tree? We're gonna use blue spruce from Candle Science today and see how that goes. A 6% fragrance load means we're gonna measure out 12 grams of fragrance for this batch which I'll carefully siphon into this glass measuring beaker. Blue spruce has notes of cinnamon, cypress, moss, spruce, pine, and cedar, so it's a pretty heavy and woody scent, which I would describe as little full lot of sap. Once our wax has reached a tasty 185 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, take it off the heat, and we're gonna add our color now before we add our fragrance oil. And I've decided since we have a roughly half a pound of wax here, we're going to use three drops of green, one drop of blue, and they come from different suppliers, really doesn't matter. Just make sure you use dye and not pigment-based colors like crayons or too much mica powder or anything like that. I always measure color by drops, not by weight, even though technically you could. So three drops of green, and because the blue doesn't have a built-in pipette, I grab my own and use that. It's a disposable one. I don't hate the environment, but it's just what I had. So one drop of blue and we're good to go. Now we'll take our 12 grams of fragrance oil and add it at the delectable temperature of 185 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 85 degrees Celsius. Adding at this higher temperature allows us to take advantage of the fact that wax expands when it heats up and shrinks as it cools. Remember that fragrance oil doesn't actually chemically bind with wax. And so we want to trap it in between the solid matrix of the wax as it cools down. So the more expanded the wax is, the more we can trap that. And that's why we stir for so long too, is to make sure that we evenly disperse that fragrance oil within the wax. So as we begin to cool down, we can trap it in between the matrix of the solid wax and make sure that that fragrance oil is evenly dispersed throughout the entire wax blend. After adding the fragrance oil and stirring for two minutes, the wax blend temperature actually dropped way below the pouring temp of 180 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna put it back on the heat for a little bit until I'm closer to 180 degrees. And this is okay, you're not gonna burn off your fragrance. To do that, you really have to keep it on a really high heat for an extended period of time, but this is simply raising the blend back up to that 180 sweet spot so that we can pour. And at 180 degrees, I will pour. Nice and sweet, not trying to allow too much air into the wax blend. And I'm just gonna take this entire wax melt, set it aside, we're gonna get ready because the next two wax melts that we're gonna pour into are gonna occur at 165 degrees and 150 degrees. So it's really important to stir to make sure that wax blend stays at a pretty consistent temperature, 
That way we can be guaranteed that when we do pour it at 165 degrees as measured on the top, that the bottom of the blend is about 165 degrees too. Now there's not much wax left in the pour pot, so the temperature drops fairly quick, but making sure to stir a little bit and watching the temperature super close at 150 degrees Fahrenheit will finally pour into the last clamshell melt holder. Another member of the empty pour pot club, which means our math was pretty dang good and that 0.86 was good. So now we're going to take these wax melts and we're going to let them sit at a room temperature between 68 and 86 for about five hours. Then they'll cool. We'll check how our color turned out, which I was pretty happy with. I was prepared to do an entire other series, but the color turned out pretty good, almost like a pine tree, which is kind of what I was going for. So I'll close these puppies up and we'll let them do their final curing for at least a week, maybe two weeks. It is a soy proprietary blend, but they also are wax melts, so there's not a huge issue with sizing for a wick. These things just end up in a wax warmer. So your mileage may vary depending on your performance and your goals and what you're looking for, but that's kind of it. I hope you found something helpful here. This is BW921. It's pretty good. It's a soy wax blend for pillars, which is interesting because soy wax is typically softer, but the melt point is higher too. It's at 135. So I hope you have a great week. I hope you found this useful. I hope you make beautiful candles. If you found any of this entertaining or enjoyable or educational, feel free to leave me a like. Otherwise, I hope you have a great week and I will see you in the next episode.